Well, good morning, everyone. Let me also uh, give you my uh, immediate thanks uh, for coming here um, and uh, joining us for this important uh, two-day meeting. Um, I, I asked Terry Manolio what I should do in these um, opening remarks, and she said, after thinking about it for a few days, came up with the idea of just, she said, just say something directorly. So I'm not exactly sure I know what that means, but I thought about it a little. So um, looking around the room and actually knowing the people that were invited to this, I recognize that there's a core group of people who, who know probably everything I'm about to say, and, and then an even larger set of people that may not know everything I'm going to say, but have heard me speak recently, and a lot of this can be very redundant. And, that, and when I'm, my remarks are not so much for them. There actually are some folks that came to this meeting that were, uh, maybe they were all invited by Mark Williams from what I just heard, is uh, that we really want to reach out to constituencies, to stakeholders, to others that we thought would be very informative to the discussion, um, who I don't actually think have been to at least an NHGRI-sponsored meeting in the last year or two or maybe ever. And so I really thought it was important as a new guest to our community um, to set the context. Uh, especially for them, and I'll hopefully you'll, even the rest of you will hear something you want to hear that'll be of value. But I do think setting a context in a meeting like this, uh, which, which was started um, by hearing the introduction about the first couple of genomic medicine meetings, um, is important. But in particularly for the for the new faces, there's a lot of places I could then start for setting the context. But I just want to put you in the brains, if you will, of NHGRI. Um, and our thinking about what we are trying to accomplish um, in, in, in helping to fund and lead the field of genomics. To, to, to sort of calibrate progress in many ways, uh, we often uh, so, sort of have as the starting point of this the completion of the Human Genome Project and recognizing that that in many ways catapulted the field forward um, and setting up a remarkable set of opportunities. Uh, NHGRI, by the way, is, is, is increasingly getting obsessed with this date. Uh, we just passed the nine-year point, nine years after completion. In fact, I pulled out, this was the press release that we put out on April 14, 2003, where we declared the Genome Project over. Um, I will tell you where planning all sorts of interesting things for the 10th anniversary of this, as you might imagine. That's a big deal. Ten year, next April will be the 10th year. Um, and so we really think a lot about how far we have come and how much time has elapsed. For example, you may not know, it's been 3,307 days since the Genome Project ended. It's actually 79,000 hours and a little over 4 million minutes. And I've even even down to the seconds. But really what we think about more than anything is has the time been well spent? And, and much of our time since the end of the Genome Project for NHGRI's perspective was very much focused on a vision we put out and published in 2003, the day the Genome Project ended, uh, that really described um, a path forward for taking advantage of the opportunities um, that were put forth by having a reference human genome sequence and lots of ideas about how to capitalize on the technologies and data that came out of the Human Genome Project. And I think it's fair to say that the successes since the end of the Genome Project have been um, impressive year after year after year. Uh, accomplishments, just a highlight reel is shown here on this timeline. And I think in many ways the pace at discoveries that have happened and advances, especially technological advances in genomics, have actually in, in many ways happened faster than any of us could have predicted, even the most optimistic of individuals back in 2003. And so where we find ourselves now, of course, is that imagery such as this, which you always envisioned eventually would be relevant, applying genomics to clinical medicine, um, but we didn't know when this would happen, uh, we find that it's relevant now. Um, and it actually became relevant uh, just not that long ago. And so the data that's been generated since 2003, the technologies that have come about, have created remarkable opportunities for making these kind of images a very real one, real ones. If I was going to single out, it's probably obvious to most of you, but just again to the guests who are here, what drives this in our brain more than anything else, if I was going to give you one example of what has happened since 2003 that pushes us faster and faster into imagery like this, of course it relates to the development and advancement in the technologies for sequencing genomes. And um, many of you sort of recognize this as sort of our, our iconic view, uh, which we uh, now have uh, and show frequently uh, the precipitous drop in the cost of sequencing DNA, sequencing human genomes, um, uh, uh, going faster than Moore's Law and really making possible the kinds of studies we're going to hear about today that without this advance we would not be at this meeting today without any question. If you just want to put specific numbers on, again, for especially those of you who don't think about genomics day in and day out like some of us do. Um, if you go back to the sequencing of the human genome as part of the Genome Project, 
That was an endeavor that took six to eight years, cost something on the order of a billion dollars, depends exactly what you count and what you don't count, but if you round up, it's about a billion dollars for that first sequence. The moment the genome project ended, the estimates were if we went then to sequence a second genome using the technologies that were available at that time, it still would have taken something on the order of three to four months and still would have cost something on the order of 10 to 50 million dollars. Again, we could never be talking about what we're going to be talking about today and tomorrow if that was the price tag for sequencing an individual's genome. But what's happened with new technologies, fancy, all sorts of different technologies, today we can sequence a genome in two to three days for something like four to $8,000, maybe even cheaper in some people's hands. And of course, what is even more remarkable is we can sequence the coding regions. The whole, whole exome sequencing now is routine for under $1,000. Um, and as a result of that, it allows the kinds of studies that we're going to be talking about to become very real here and now. So I give this as an example. There are other things that have advanced the field remarkably, but I think more than anything, it's, 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 it's slides like this that summarize what really changed uh, many things for us. And we recognized that several years ago, that the field was going faster than we had even anticipated, and so it was time to put out a new strategic vision, which, looking around the room, many of you were involved in many workshops and many deliberations, and we just heard, um, as Dan pointed out, the, the early meeting that was the final uh, major meeting that led to uh, input that we collected before we finally put the, 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 the final form, this strategic uh, vision that was published just a little over a year ago. And if, for any of you who have not seen this or want to get access to it or any of the other things about our strategic planning process, of course, you can go to this convenient URL and get that information. What the strategic plan, I'm just going to just again for the new folks here, uh, describe is a, a new vision for moving from the base pairs of the Human Genome Project to the bedside of patients, or if you prefer the metaphor, from the double helix to human health, and doing so now in a way that's far more descriptive of the steps that are going to be needed to actually um, implement genomic medicine in a very real and practical way, but still require an enormous amount of research that was going to be required, but now would be organized into five major domains of activity, one uh, describing uh, activity that advances our understanding about the structure of genomes, which we're very familiar with, increasingly using knowledge of genomics to understand how genomes work, the biology of genomes, applying that to the understanding the biology of disease, then taking it out and actually trying to change the practice of medicine by advancing the science of medicine using genomic approaches, and finally demonstrating that indeed what you are doing is actually improving the effectiveness of healthcare. These five domains represent the organizing framework for our strategic plan which we um, encapsulate in graphic form in figure two in the strategic plan, which now is the icon that I can tell you the Institute sort of looks at uh, critically and almost constantly describing the five domains, but then describing in these hypothetical uh, density plots of progress in, in, in accomplishments that are taking place across those domains in different time intervals dating back to the Genome Project and looking out into the future. Where our eyes are critically focused, of course, is the next decade. And why we are here is to think about what are we, what should we be doing as a field, what should NHGRI be doing as a funding agency to make this reality of this density plot um, with an emphasis in particular of massive accomplishments in the second and third domain, but thinking as much as we can to move that center of gravity out to the more clinically oriented domains. So in thinking about this, uh, what we want to do in workshops like this and meetings like this is to help us uh, very much think about our future. Um, because the investments that we will make in genomics now uh, will very much change the future of this field, and we want to make those investments widely, wisely and productively. Dan set me up very nicely um, uh, in, in, in pointing out that at this early meeting, which was the, the last meeting where the community had substantial input into what eventually became our new strategic vision, he, the, he described debate. And the debate was around, was it ready? Was the, was the field ready to apply genomics to medicine? And, and um, that actually was interesting because what I would say has changed between then and now is that I don't think there's a debate about if it's time to do that or whether it's going to happen. But the debate that I want to describe to you is a very real one in, 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 in thinking across these five progressive domains. It's not so much if it's going to happen, but the rate at which it's going to happen. And by that I mean, and I'm being totally candid with you, is that both internally within the Institute, and we have representatives at this Institute, they will all agree with this, also around our, our advisory process, such as our council, and I know we have several council members here, they will absolutely tell me what I'm about to tell you is absolutely true, and I hear constantly 
um, from members of the community, it, it, arg constructive arguments about the pace at which we are going to move from the leftward part of this graph graphic to the rightward part. There is a constituency that, that everybody's bought into it, as far as I can tell, uh, but some believe we will casually stroll our way through and, you know, eventually we will sort of get rightward. Uh, there's another group of individuals, both inside the institute and outside the institute, who think we'll speed walk there because everything's just moving and the opportunities are here and we should go um, at relatively brisk pace. And then there's others, again, both internally and externally, who think that it's absolutely happening, a mad dash, and we should just, we're absolutely going to get there. No question about it, and it's going to happen sooner than we could have anticipated. I don't know the right answer here. I, I arbitrate a lot of these debates. I actually enjoy the debates. Uh, we're going to figure this out. And that's part of it is I think what we don't know is which of these scenarios are really the right one, um, the correct one, and uh, we're going to learn. Um, and the fact of the matter is what we're talking about in a gathering like this meeting, as it was for the Genomic Medicine 1 and 2 meeting, is to really explore the more rightward side of this as you start to apply genomics in a fashion that might actually uh, both help to understand the, you know, the, the biology of disease, but even beyond that of thinking about how you might actually change medical science and perhaps even thinking about whether that's practical and whether that's actually going to be effective at improving healthcare overall. So this is the context by which we've had these three meetings. The other key context that I really want to stress, especially from NHGRI's point of view, is the reason we're having these forums is our acute interest in learning, uh, learning about what that front ebb looks like and learning to figure out what the rate of accomplishment is going to be moving from left to right. So I just really want to stress that we aim to learn. Um, we are here as students of this. And, um, and we are critically listening. We did in the first two meetings. Um, but the reason uh, we decided to have this series of meetings was to give us an opportunity to bring people in who are already starting to, to do these kinds of activities, which at the early meeting we were told will happen way, way out there. We discovered they're already starting to happen. We said we need to learn from them, and hopefully you'll learn from each other and we can help facilitate and, and see that happen. By the way, Mark Williams, you do notice the clip, the thing you, on Wisconsin, right? You, but, there you go, excellent. So the Wisconsin connection, I, if I'm going to show a student, I have to show a student at the University of Wisconsin, just sorry, my bias. Um, and uh, so that's, that's really what I hope I uh, really want you to recognize how appreciative we are of having you come here and to the other meetings basically to teach us and to help educate us about what this looks like, and we hope you get something out of this as well. And the other thing that I, I really want to stress that NHGRI is, we are still students of some of this, is, is do recognize that across these five domains, uh, we're really good at this. I mean, this is, this is our bread and butter for a long time. These domains, basic science, the Human Genome Project and even understanding genomes, that is absolutely our comfort food. We're, we're, I think we're pretty good at it. Um, and we are getting to be better and better at translational science as you move rightward, and, uh, but we still have a lot to learn. But again, uh, that is something that we appreciate is important and we are trying to you know, get more and more competency in that area. And as I've come to learn, including from some folks in this room, is as we even move more rightward than that, we need to be thinking about how we actually implement this at a practical level um, in, in medicine. And there's a whole science associated with that. And there we very much are, uh, I'm not even sure we're in college yet about that. We're early days, but we are, we are, we are good learners and we are, are working very hard to get to really understand that component of this as well. So that's mostly what I wanted to tell you, I think, very much in the spirit of, of making you appreciate that we very much um, uh, regard this as a work in progress. This is something we need to learn about as we try to understand the kind of programs we're going to put across um, in the coming years, and that's exactly the kinds of things we want to learn about in genomic medicine, specifically by many of the people in this room. So I was thinking about a best way to close, and I'd like to close with quotes, at least for some of my talks, and I was pondering what would be the best one, and I was sitting in my office yesterday, and then all of a sudden I looked up, literally, um, I, and I saw a quote that I have above my door in, in my office at work, and I just took a photograph of it because I thought it was really appropriate. It's an Einstein quote I'm sure many of you heard. If we, if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research. And absolutely, that's what we feel like. I mean, this is absolutely research, and we are trying to figure out um, exactly the best way to move forward. We're trying to learn from you and others, and we'll be listening acutely. So with that, I will close, um, and I actually still think we're ahead of schedule, uh, so which is always good. If there are any immediate questions for me from an NHGRI perspective or big picture, I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to be at this entire meeting. You can also catch me at a break. But are there any, any immediate burning questions about anything I said? If not, I might I don't, I don't have a question, yeah. but I, but I, do have a, I, I 
this is like a bureaucratic comment. Uh, I was actually listening to some of the videotapes from uh, from previous meetings, and it's incredibly frustrating when people ask questions and then engage in a dialogue and don't use the microphones. Yeah, well, we will. We will. We so, are, that's a very good point. Just and actually, maybe we did, we didn't make that comment at the beginning. Maybe everybody knows this, but we are. And Terry, correct me if I'm wrong. We're videotaping this entire meeting. Yes. It will be put up on the web and. So we, were, we are assuming that anything that people are talking about, this, we regard this as an open meeting. We're doing this as, in part on behalf of the community. We are assuming that anything you're going to talk about, you are comfortable with being broadcast. If you are not comfortable with that, delete those slides before you get up here, because we, we want all these talks to be able to be put up on our Genome TV channel of YouTube. So, um, but, but as a result, I agree with what Dan said. Let's be really cognizant of using microphones. Yes? Starting with you, using a microphone. Yeah, just. Uh can you hear this? Uh, yeah. So I'm Sean Tunis, a uh, uh, member of EGAP's working group in the, from the Center for Medical Technology Policy. It's my first time hearing you speak, or so I'm kind of from the, I guess, the, the fifth domain that you described, and that's, so a friend of Mark Williams. Uh, <laughs> we all are. <laughs> um, yeah, was, and so I, I haven't really looked at the participant list, but you know, many of the things that you described in the sort of implementation research, there's obviously lots of folks around NIH who think, you know, daily and deeply about those things. And I, and I just wonder to what extent NHGRI, you know, works closely with folks from, you know, all around NIH on, you know, to kind of dive into those other areas as well, or whether it's mostly an outward facing to, you know, folks like, uh, you know, some of the other people that Mark invited? Uh, I think it's both. I mean, so and we're learning who some of those folks are. I mean, and, and but it's, it's early days. And part of it is we're trying to understand, um, again, we're getting back to the pace of this. We need to understand not just so much generically about, about what we need to know. We want to understand it within a context of what we might actually need to implement um, so that we have real specific examples to talk to them about. But increasingly, the answer is we, we are learning about that. We need to learn more. And, and it's occasionally, it's people like Mark or somebody from the outside that puts two people at NIH together. That happens all the time, and that's okay. Okay, Rex, turn it over to you. 